Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to, uh, I would call this the Storyteller Spotlight. We're going to look at Otomo. It was interesting um, how this came about because I wasn't intending to do a YouTube video today, but as many things in my life are, <laughs> things spontaneously line up and I go, this would be a great video. So anyway, um, on Patreon right now, what I've been trying to do for people is we've been dissecting people's favorite artists and look at looking at how they put all the puzzle pieces together to actually draw comic book stories because anyone who's actually attempted to actually storytell um knows that it's like you know you have to learn to draw and learning to draw is a multi-tier process you kind of get used to drawing figures and objects in perspective but then all of a sudden you've got to put clothes on the figure. You've learned anatomy and you kind of have it memorized and you can sort of move your figure around. And then it's like, oh man, I've got to put this person in a dress with folds. And this guy wears a jacket and he's got a belt. And this character is in a superhero costume that has all these complex shapes on it that when I turn it at different angles are funky to draw. And so there's this um construction process that goes on and then once you can sort of construct things to a decent degree then you got to put them in scenes and you're trying to figure out like where the perspective is and where the horizon line is and how these characters it's it really is a lot to take on and i try to make it very accessible for people and kind of welcoming and i'm always incredibly encouraging with it but look the reality is it's it is tough <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Even when you can draw well, the stuff will hand your ass to you and then beat you up <laughs> and take your ass. No, um, <laughs> yes, actually. Uh, but anyway, so, so this week we looked at Trad Moore and Dan Mora so far on my channel. And I was going to do a video today. We, we were going to move into either Brian Hitch or Frank Quietly. And that's how the Secure thing came along is I'm, I'm a little bit of a bigger fan of Frank Quietly's work um, than Hitch. So I was looking at the authority um, right before I did this video and kind of went through a bunch of um, Frank's uh, issues of the book. And it's it's really, really good. I can see a lot of um, Otomo in the work and some Mobius. And, um, you know, his aesthetic is very different than Hitch. I mean, Hitch, Hitch really redefined a comics for a brief moment um or not a brief moment i mean like he had a he had a pretty big impact um in the late 90s um working on the authority and quietly followed him but anyway it was an interesting coincidence is i went like okay like that frank quietly stuff was interesting now i would like to look at some atomo and i just happened to pick this out of the whole series i think there's 38 issues and this is actually one of my favorite comics, and I didn't know it just based on Akira issue number four. But I, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? Let's just, I was going to look at it anyway, and I figured let's just look at it together. So, again, I will actually recommend that if you are interested in learning to draw, learning to ink, learning about comics and storytelling, definitely check out my Patreon. Um, there's probably seven to eight hundred videos up there. And um, they're long. They're not like five-minute videos. They're as long as anything that I do on YouTube. And uh, it's a pretty incredible place to learn. And people are always kind of blown away by how much they do get from it. So anyway, let's get into this. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do a super fun Sunday this weekend. I've got some stuff going on over the weekend. And I may not be able to do it. So we'll see. I'm going to try to do it obviously, but I can't guarantee it. But if not, we'll maybe try to come back earlier in the week to do uh something similar. So anyway, this is the cover. I've always loved this this just kind of moment in the story. Um I love the lighting on this cover. Um the the colors are actually quite nice. Um and uh it's just a really really cool drawing. But but one of the things that I was noticing looking at um Frank Quietly stuff was his use of the camera and how he moved it around and where he would place the horizon line and um sort of the perspective and stuff like that. And I I don't think that Atomo flexes them as aggressively as um uh Frank did in uh, Authority, but I definitely think that Otomo was a big influence on a lot of his storytelling beats. 
So this is a pretty direct shot. It was the one thing I was noticing is that, that this is definitely more conservative in terms of the shots, but like, this is nice. I like that they turn the camera. We're a little bit beneath this character, um, like here, we're above this character and in a uh, panel two, it's real subtle stuff. I mean, I, I generally will tell people to try to avoid like, um, you know, straight vertical lines if you can help it, but it definitely has its place in comic books. I mean, you can see here in, in, in this panel that he did it. So it's, it's just, you just want to be mindful of that. It can start to slow down the storytelling a little bit, even just rotating a panel, the tiniest bit will give it a little bit of a punch, but, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Kubrick and Kubrick uses a lot of sort of like straight perspective and, um, it, it's very, very cool, but it's definitely maybe not as, um, what would you call it? Like dynamic American superhero comic book storytelling. So it really depends. I mean, it's, it's, you know, like I was saying, there's a lot to construct when you're trying to draw pages and there's a lot of decision-making that goes along the way. But what I'm trying to do now is I really want people to be able to merge these ideas and really kind of start to decide for themselves what, what their sort of um, idea is for storytelling. And look, you can get it from TV shows or movies or whatever you want to do. Um, but, you know, you, there's a lot of great comic book artists that have traveled this path before us. So it's it's fun, at least visually, to look at how comic book artists have um approached these things and you can see as the scene starts to ramp up he is starting to turn the camera angle more um you know it creates a little bit of uneasiness a little bit more of a dynamic speed lines are starting to come in which creates a little bit of aggression i mean these are all like symbols symbols of um things going on you know Yeah, you would think just being able to draw well is enough, but I mean, I, I think that there's definitely people out there that can do portraits and can do life studies and, and do still lifes and stuff like that. And look, taking a character and having to move it through a scene will really, really challenge you. So this is what I've been recommending to people is... You really just need to start building those muscles right away. Even if you draw poorly, I would just get used to the idea that this is how you're going to draw and then start building from the outside as well. Meaning that, that as you struggle with things, you start to acknowledge them. So you go, man, I don't understand three point perspective. You kind of cross that bridge when it starts to hand it's, you know, you're getting, you're getting challenged by it and you feel like you're failing at it. It's a really, really good way to learn. I wish that, um, I, you know, it's like, like, uh, I had to hit my head against the wall a lot to figure out all the things that I wanted to learn. I'm still doing it. I'm mean, to be clear. It's, it's still a challenge, but, um, yeah, I mean, I spent the last two weeks kind of fine-tuning things that I didn't like about my stuff, and uh, it's just incredible when you start having stuff that you actually can do, and then you really can focus in on what you can't do. It's like, you go, man, when the head is turned at this particular angle, I can't seem to get the eye sockets. Like, like I, do they slope down? Are they more hor hor horizontal? Um, and you can really just dial in little things and that's how you, you know, you're accumulating, um, skill, but if you don't try stuff, then you really don't know, you know, you could sit and, um, uh, try to prepare for all this, but unfortunately what ends up happening is you go, oh man, I never did this. And you start to feel like, uh, you were unprepared. So better to just get used to the feeling of not knowing how to draw shit and being able to sort of work your way through it um than the opposite which is that you're preparing for challenges that you don't you really can't anticipate um because learning perspective and learning how to draw clothes and all this stuff it definitely helps but if you don't know the pur purpose of it i think it's much more difficult to um transition <laughs> This is great. Man, I would highly, highly recommend that you check out Frank's run on The Authority, though, in particular. It's very, very good. Like, and the aesthetic is a little weird. Like, his people, um, I was noticing that people were kind of critical of, of how he drew faces and stuff like that. 
His storytelling is very, very interesting, and he really can move the camera around in just incredible ways, though. But this stuff is all pretty, like, you know, um, straightforward, but it gets, it ramps up. You'll see here in a bit. I like, I do like stories like this where it's, it's, you get to know the characters and then the characters are thrown into these incredible situations. Um, I, when I see a book that's all incredible situations, it can kind of be a little bit of an overload. This is nice. Oh, this is really cool. And, you know, I've mentioned to the patrons, you're also going to want to pick a level of detail. And it, it can be a combination of des decisions that, that sort of create the the ultimate answer that you give yourself. But, you, you know, one th consideration is how much work do you want to do a year? Because that really will sort of, it will create a parameter for you. You know, if you go, I've got 16 months to get through this series and it's X amount of pages, then you know right away how how much time you can really allot to each page. Um, and uh, it makes it doable. I in, in my mind, where I always wanted to be with comic book drawing was somewhere between six and like nine books a year, which would be 120 to... 160 170 pages or pieces of art so that gives you about two to three days a piece i think drawing less is cool um i mean i think it depends on depends on a lot of things I mean, now with crowdfunded books, you figure, I, I think a good amount would be two 48-page books a year, and then maybe some some extras that are that sort of tag along with it, meaning that, like, you have a real nice uh, maybe making of or sketchbook type thing that could be a companion book, so they get another 40 to 60-page book of um, drawings and stuff that they can uh, engage in with... Um, you know, whatever story, you know, like getting the people familiar with the characters. I mean, the one advantage that, that I think people have doing creator own books is um, it's new and it's exciting. I remember collecting the image books and there was just something exciting about meeting all these characters and every, you know, it's like, oh, the Savage Dragon. It's like, cool. And then you'd meet a villain for the first time and you really felt like you were a part of something. And that was really, really fun. And, um, so that's the advantage of new books. Um, the disadvantage is, is that they're, they're not Batman and they're not Wolverine and they're not Superman and they're not Wonder Woman or Jean Grey. You know, people don't know them and don't know the history of them. So it's, it's uh, one of those things. This is really cool. This is all, it almost creates a trippy optical illusion because it feels like you're looking down and looking up a little bit. <clears throat> This is nice. Really, really cool effect with the um, balls going through the um, alley. Like, man, that looks crazy. This is really good. Where are my... I won't say it so that just in case YouTube flags words. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this is cool. These aren't great scans, but, um, you know. I do like the colors on this book. But it, it is very cool in black and white, too. I have the black and white phone books, and I have nearly a full run of the, um, I don't know, was it Epic? I, I have some over here. I can't remember what the company was that published the um, little square-bound ones. But, uh, yeah, it would, it would actually be very, very cool if they reprinted um, the color version in, in um, like, an art, artist edition. Not artist edition, but what I mean is um, a... Uh, a big, like, a, a absolute size, um, I think would be very, very nice. This is cool. I like how low the camera angle is here. 
a really, really cool shot. This is all nice. This is fun stuff. I mean, most of it looks pretty doable in terms of like the complexity, but but uh, these artists are so good, they make things look easy. I always liked, one of the early things that I responded to with Akira was I liked how simple the character were, characters were and then the world around them felt a little more detailed. I felt that it was a very um, like expedient uh, form of storytelling that I wasn't getting bogged down um, looking at the characters and trying to see like all the rendering on their bodies and the detailing on their costumes, but the, the environments had enough oomph, um, that I never felt like short change. Like I felt like I was still getting, um, a, uh, you know, I was going to say like a triple A game, but you know, like a high budget film, um, I had kind of mentioned that in a recent Patreon video, which was um, gritty art and dirty art and art that's kind of fast and sort of loose and stuff like that can kind of fall into a weird category for fans. I, I think artists appreciate it more, but uh, fans do tend to like stuff that's got a little bit more of a spit shine on it and is a little more detailed and a little more finesse just based on... The, um, <laughs> just based on what I've seen, I like both, but I'm also an artist, but yeah, rough art and stuff that's done real fast and kind of messy can sometimes fall between the cracks. It just depends. I always tell people you really have to own it and then just make sure that you do it really, really well. Do you should definitely do what you're more, most comfortable with and what you enjoy and gets you excited. Cause ultimately what your responsibility is, is it's going to be sitting down and drawing, you know, every day. So if you pick some style that you actually don't enjoy doing, it's not going to make your days very fun. So. I get really addicted to learning. I had said this to, I don't remember, someone recently, but it's like when when I have an opportunity to actually woodshed, I love it. This is such a cool drawing. Um, and it's actually difficult for me to get out of it, but I, I'm pulling myself out of it as we speak. But uh, it's just so fun because you, you're like, oh, cool. Okay, I can learn this. I can get better at this. And it's exciting, you know. But at some point, you got to put the show on the road again, so... This is all cool. Oh, this is so good. I love this. Running and running and running and running and running and running and running. Dude, that's so badass. Mm -mm. <laughs> a sewer never looks so cool it's a, you know it's nicely done simple it you know would take a while to draw it but it's it's not the most complex design um you know didn't have to deal with the chopper blades the little bit of speed blur on them works gets you there not a lot of um, cylindrical shapes and stuff like that. And there's a few, but uh, those will beat you up pretty good. Was funny. One of the first comic book pinups that I ever did was for um, Robotech. I did a, a huge aircraft carrier type ship called the SDF-1. Oh my god! I wasn't probably fully ready to draw something like that, but it's like it was literally like drawing an aircraft or aircraft carrier with all these guns and shapes and stuff like that. And um, like my vanishing point was like five feet away from the drawing. It was so funny. I had like three yardsticks like tied together, and I'm trying to do this like sweeping perspective. It was pretty funny. It was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, it was one of the first like published pinups that I ever did. I think it's in the Robotech source book. I don't know. I've looked for it online. Sometimes you can find it online. Sometimes you can't. Not the comic, and the comic probably is online, but I've looked up, like, Richard Friend SDF1 pinup and not been able to find it. And other times it, it sort of does surface, but eh, it is what it is. It's it was, it was actually funny enough. It was kind of inspired by Atomo at the time. 
Um, it's like hovering over this big city that I, I, I left room for the colorist to sort of add a little bit of detail. They didn't go as, they didn't really go the route that I exactly wanted. They did nice colors, but I envisioned it more like at night with maybe like streaks of like car headlights and stuff and, and uh, it didn't really get colored that way, so. I don't generally get too controlling of colorists. I figure it's like, unless they, I mean, I. I mean, with Kelsey, I'm just going to kind of let him do what he wants. I, he he wanted ideas, so I'll give him ideas. But generally speaking, it's like, you know, I do my job, they do theirs. And unless it goes way, way to something that I'm just not into, I probably wouldn't say anything. Sometimes stuff is colored wrong. Like uh, with Crystal Planet, there was mistakes that just were oversights that I had to point out. But that's just, you know, someone else trying to read your work. This is nice. I've been playing with different inking tools too. It's been interesting because uh, that's a hard thing to bring back into your stuff. This is like, I think I can combine this, the story. So, you know, as, as someone that's an inker, um, I haven't inked really very much in the last like five or six months. Um, so it gave me an opportunity to sort of like reevaluate like how I would go about it for my own work, meaning Blaster Kid, not Crystal Planet. And uh, I was watching something yesterday, and they were talking about Frazetta. It was his son, Frank Jr. And um, I knew part of this story, but he he said it in a way where I went, ooh, okay, that is interesting. I, I put some pieces together from a few different sources and got a more accurate story. So everyone knows that he worked, Frank worked for Al Cap for about 10 years, from Frank's, like, slightly, probably like 26 years old to about 36 years old. And um, when Frank quit, you know, the story is is that his work was old-fashioned and he couldn't find work. What had happened is he had worked on Little Abner for so long that he had actually forgotten how to draw anything other than that style. And so when you see those really, like in the Frazetta sketchbooks, you see like it, he went to a figure drawing class and there's like live nude models that he's drawing from. Those were done the year after he left Al Cap, which I had never seen fully completely explained. Um, Roy Crinkle um, got Frank into uh, figure drawing classes and Frank basically reinvented himself over the next year learning basically how to draw again. He was still doing nice work on Little Abner, but it was a completely irrelevant um, piece of the puzzle for where he needed to go at that time. So for someone like me, it's like, I shut a door. I'm not going backwards, I'm moving forwards. And so, although I probably will bring along little things that I learned in the past, overall, I'm just basically reinventing myself. I have no interest in repeating anything that I've done. Um, I'm looking to the future. And so the same goes for inking, like coming back to inking, it's like, I don't have to do anything that I did before. I can if I want, but I, I you know, I'm looking to do something new, something, um, you know, beyond that. So it's interesting, but yeah, so I've been going through a lot of different, um, pens and all kinds of stuff and trying different techniques and stuff like that. And I, I got the look that I wanted finally, it took a while, but I finally figured out, um, over a couple of days. I mean, it took longer than that. It took a long time, but over, um, a few days, uh, it started to come together and I saw bits and pieces of things and I went, this is it. You got it. <laughs> so it was exciting, you know, but it took a lot of work, a lot of soul searching. -na 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 -na. This is really cool. Oh yeah, I remember this. This is awesome. I like this little thing right here. It's a very nice little suggestion of a um, city flying away from it. And I like how he turned <coughs> us inside the, you know, it feels like the helicopter is banking out. That's a really nice touch. This is great too. It's like very low angle looking up at him. Really, really clever. But these are the things that, 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 again, it's like you learn to draw the fundamentals, meaning that you learn how to use shapes and turn them in space and do simple lighting on them. You learn how to draw figures and then you kind of learn your anatomy and then you got to put clothes on these figures because generally speaking, the characters you're going to be drawing are clothed, but you kind of need to know what's underneath it to sort of do this. Um, and uh, 
then you put them in scenes and then you it's like you know that's sort of combining like three to four steps and then you know you have to start picking shots C camera angles and these subtle things like oh he turned the helicopter inside you know where like maybe someone that would draw a panel like this would draw it straight up and down actually i i didn't have my styles the other day but you know what i mean like oh sorry uh do brush instead of you know like like someone might do this where they have the window straight and it's like yeah, he's still, you know, this would be more of a, a side view. And it's still the same idea, but it's definitely not as cool as, as him turning it and having it a slightly, well, it's got a little bit of a curvilinear sort of vibe to it, but you know what I mean? He's got everything going like this. And if you even move down further, it probably would start to curve a little bit like this. Er, no, the floor might, but... And then this is nice too. You've got you know a shot like this so i'm trying to in this um tr trying to slowly um combine all these ideas for people and in, in, in a weird way sort of slightly tricking them into learning this stuff it's like fundamentals 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 okay now you should be drawing pages and it probably is scary and confusing to people but I think it's the best step you can't i just don't believe you can fully prepare to draw comic books you have to just draw them <laughs> bad or good it doesn't kind of matter <laughs> you'll get better <laughs> but you have to be you i really do feel like you have to be trying to draw pages and I tell people, I said, you're going to surprise yourself. There's going to be stuff that you actually kind of do okay after a little while. You know, it might take a few weeks, it might take a few months. But, uh, yeah, you'll have little strengths in your work that you won't have to um, focus on as much, you know. And then you'll you'll know what you don't know how to do. It'll bug you. You'll go, I, I don't know why. Why is my nose never look right with my eyes? But at least you can then start to, you know micro develop that stuff this is great that's cool too but you know one little thing you can maybe try is um you know if you have photoshop or something like that is just, just try to find you know the perspective of stuff in the drawings you know see if you can kind of see through it and you know da 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 find the structure of the panels and whatnot it might help you don't leave any stone unturned would be my advice give it all a shot you know but but always be drawing don't don't get stuck in just like a like a learning cycle and this is cool he's got nice like kind of rectangle thing going on here let's see a little bit of the underneath of it but it's all there you know scott robertson would put some little stick thing right there and bring it over and you know you just start to be able to see and feel all these shapes and it really it becomes actually kind of fun like construction becomes fun and not so freaky but then putting it together becomes freaky. That's why uh, I recommend just getting used to um, doing pages. Da -na -na -na. This is cool. And you'll you'll have favorite styles and stuff. Some people storytelling you'll be able to appreciate and know that it's quite well done, but it you'll go, oh, that's just not how I d would draw. And it could be on a few fronts. And, and, and I've said this too in Patreon videos. There's stuff that I like that I sometimes see in people's stuff. And, you know, at some point maybe you have a... A problem to solve and you go oh you know maybe i could do something like that and then it just doesn't look right in your stuff and so you you i mean you have a choice at that point to use it or not but generally speaking if i don't feel it works on my stuff it's out so 
your work will start to dictate its own rule book. Those are great shots. You can feel it's a three point perspective. And we're up, the horizon line is somewhere down here. <clears throat> All right, we're getting towards the end of this. Hopefully, this was fun to check out. I didn't really have a lot to say about Atomo in this, so I apologize if you were looking for like massive amounts of Atomo sort of um, conversation, but. The one thing that I found is I've learned more and explained more and tried to like point things out. So many of the really, really good teachers seem to hit on the same exact things that I bring up here. Um, you know, maybe for a different problem solving, but I feel like that that I'm I'm giving decent advice. I think the difference between mine and other people's is I have the experience of drawing comics, working in comics, and kind of seeing how it ticks. So it's like sometimes you'll find a good teacher that can teach you how to draw, but not really how to do this. They are different muscles. They, Like I said, comics will kick your ass. It'll kick your ass. That's so cool. And if all this stuff wasn't enough to take on, you have to design things. <laughs> Generally. I mean, I guess if you were drawing like Batman or something like that, you wouldn't have to design it. But I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, You'll be called upon. It's like, hey, you know, Catwoman's got a new car. Make it up. And it's like, now you've got an, another sort of demand placed on you. This is cool. These are fun little ships. I, I actually didn't kind of remember them. They're, they're, they're cool. I haven't really flipped through this comic in a few years. So it's been a while. Oh, so much good art. I don't have time to look at it all. I would need three lives. <laughs> One could be the observer. Two could be the doer. And then third could be the dreamer. It's fun to dream. Dream of creation. We all do it. You'll know you're on the right path if you can't wait to get up in the morning and actually work on what you're doing. If you ever want an indicator of if you're heading the right route or not, that'll that is it. You will want to stay up later. You will want to get up earlier and get back to it. And if you don't have that, then uh, you you might be barking up the slightly wrong tree. Rough, rough. <laughs> Are any of you guys addicted to learning and trying to learn new stuff? That I, I actually consider it almost like a, a bad habit that I have. I don't know what it is, but I, I freaking love learning new shit. Almost, like I said, almost to a bad point. Like, where it's like, I have to force myself to stop. <laughs> But it, it, it's it's just random. It's not like, uh, I mean, it's not looking at a Tomo. That's not what I mean. It's just about getting better at what I do, what I want to do. Right, here we go. But it's like, like I, I you know, you've seen me use a lot of like band and music analogies, but it is kind of one of those things where it's like you could sit in your room and practice guitar forever or, or uh, I mean, I have friends that do it. <laughs> it's like... Or you see them on message boards, you know, even art message boards where they know everything about art. They're like, this is the pen that blah, blah, blah uses and all this stuff. And it's like, are you drawing? Are, are you doing comics? And like I said, I'm not going to point fingers because it took me forever to get my shit together. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at some point you really do kind of have to pull yourself out of that headspace if you actually want to create stuff and just kind of go for it and then take your lumps and... Um, 
uh, you know, you'll learn along the way too. And then uh, this is what I've kind of told myself now so that it doesn't become an issue is in between jobs, I will give myself a week or two to sort of, you know, uh, let my imagination go nuts with things that I want to um, develop, you know, because I'm sure everybody's like, I want to learn to oil paint and I need to get gouache and I want to try watercolor and I really want to fuck around with ZBrush and this, that, and the other. I, I'm not that scattered right now. It's only about drawing, but, you know, as I travel down the road, stuff like that might uh, become popular. This kind of reminds me of the shot from uh, Blade Runner, the, the newer movie. It, it's that weird room that they go in with all the yellow and there's the person behind the glass. It's not exactly like it, but it's kind of has a little bit of that vibe I, re I really like this this is nice but you know this is in some ways a nice example of what i was talking about where it's like the backgrounds sort of do the heavy lifting and the characters are you know, overall pretty pretty straightforward and direct and it it works well i really think that it's it's actually a pleasing way to read a story um you know I'm aware that Otomo probably uses assistance for this stuff. I, it would be actually really interesting, though, to see exactly what the process is. Like, um, does he lay it out? Are the backgrounds drawn in after he does the figure work? Or how does it work? But, uh, you know, it's really cool. Really, really cool. Do you think it would be possible to do another Akira movie? Like, does the, the first one, do you feel like it covers the story enough? Or could they could they do a second pass and try to do maybe like a three-hour animated story and tell it differently? And, you know, like, would that be worth revisiting? What's your thoughts? I love, this is one of, I don't know why. This is one of my favorite, favorite in the whole series. I don't know why. I just love that. I don't know if it's because it reminds me a little bit of the Jawa. <laughs> the Jawa, well, I don't even know what they call the thing, but, you know, like, it's got a little bit of a vibe like that. Um, but, man, it's so fun. It's, it's just a really, really fun and creative shot. This would take a while, you know. If you had a budget for this page, this page is, is you're going to spend a lot of the budgetary uh, time on it. But this isn't so bad. It's not bad at all, actually. This is pretty normal for any kind of panel. That's nice. So, <clears throat> you know, the time was allocated, I think, pretty intelligently across this. Like, it looks, it looks, makes sense to me, you know. You can actually, and it's funny, is, is I've, I've heard this before, um, but, you know, it's not a bad idea to try to put at least one thing on every page that's, that's got a little bit of magic to it. You know, something that's a little special if you can, if you can do it. I mean, I would say like a page like this doesn't really have it, and I'm not uh, attacking a Tomo, but but uh, if you were, you know, like like as you draw pages, if you can try to squeeze in at least, you know, one sort of, I don't know if you call it money shot, but you know, something like this, it's just really like nicely done. But it could be something more simple. I'll try to find like a really really nice simple shot. I mean, this is great. It's very memorable. That's what maybe that's kind of what I'm thinking is is something memorable memorable on each page. To me, I think is 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 eh, kind of important. These are long issues. Well, I think they're 48 or 60 pages. It feels like a it's like a lot. I like this top panel. This is cool. <laughs> it's funny. This is a lot of panels on this page. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine panel pages. It's, it's, it it feels roomy though. I don't I don't feel like anything is drawn overly small. Like you know, you don't have a lot of stuff like people like this size can kind of get a little sort of you don't like that either kitty you know if you had something like this like a lot of panels like this it gets a little kind of a little meh ah oh, it's cool god so great 
open the window for my cat. Here, do you want the window open? Get some sunshine, buddy. <laughs> oh, this is great, too. He's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of the later issues, too, when the city's flooded and all the buildings are knocked over. Oh, my God. Those are so good. This is great panel. I love that we're kind of, like, inside this, like, little, um... Oh, well, it's the toll booth or whatever, but, man, it's kick-ass. So long, sucker. Come back here. Uh, well... Oh, I guess these must have opened slightly out of order. This is the last page from the story. I apologize that it kind of went out of order. You jerk. But. Oh, I don't want that. What is this? Oh, no, it's that. Whoa. What? Wait, what? What? What is going on? Wait. That's funny. It kind of put the. I guess I never shut that one. What is going on? I guess I didn't shut those. That's funny. I thought I did. And then this. Oh, that's weird. Maybe there were some redundant files in the thing. I don't know. I know it wasn't paying attention. All right, you guys have a great day. I think that there's actually some decent sort of uh, like insight into the process of like learning to draw. Again, I, I, I can't stress this enough though. You, if you want to draw comic books and you don't feel like you're comfortable with your anatomy and you don't really understand perspective and all that stuff and you don't really know where to start, Honestly, I really do recommend just try drawing a couple of pages. You don't have to show them to anyone, but that is going to be one exciting for you. It's going to be challenging. It'll be hard, but but you'll really feel a sense of accomplishment if you draw three sequential pages, no matter how shitty they are, and then you can start to fine tune things. Okay, I really feel that that is a great process of doing it and then you know spend spend you know a few hours each day maybe working on anatomy week spots and if you feel like all of your anatomy is bad fine you know then then you you should just kind of methodically go through everything and this stuff takes a while to memorize that would be another thing that I would point out to you is that you're gonna have to memorize the stuff over and over and over again you can create like little um cheat sheets that you keep around you know um with your studies and whatnot um, I wouldn't recommend either um, doing like rendery studies, like like you know if you're drawing an arm, and uh, you know you see in the anatomy books where they have all the like sort of striations of things. Don't waste your time doing that. What you want to learn is you want to learn the shapes and how they attach to the bone, and get that going first. It, it really don't spend time on noodling shit. Um, you need to look at the big picture, and the first big picture for you is going to be form. And being able to put things on form, okay? I promise you with this that that's what you're going to need to be able to do. Because when you can do this, you can render the fuck out of this thing. But if you can't do this, what is the point of sitting and doing this for an extra 45 minutes on a poorly you're not going to memorize that you know what i mean so think big simple and what do you think the final thing would be solid <laughs> but yeah have some fun and draw a few pages and then build out from there and um just keep learning uh, a little bit of new stuff and um you know i i really do stress this to people don't feel the need to one analyze or criti criticize your work right away and then two you don't have to show it online not everything needs to be online just get good at what you're doing the fans will be there they're waiting they're already your fans are waiting they don't even know that they're waiting for you but when you get your shit together they're gonna be there and they're gonna find your stuff fast you'll see <laughs> it's like no rich i gotta build the audience now you really don't <laughs> great art will put asses in the seats faster than you can imagine so all right you have a great day and uh i might be back sunday i may not we'll see all right bye